Um, Mr. Hichilema has a long history of doing business in this country. Um, what, he was born in Monze. Uh, by the time he was 32, he became the, uh, a partner and CEO of Cooper's Library, uh, which became uh, Grant Thornton. And he's basically diversified his business since then, um, from ranching to property development to a variety of different things. Um, he's very well known in the business community, and tonight we basically get to hear about his story. Um, how did he do it? How did he get to where he is? And that's what it is. Um, you know, today we're focusing on business. This, is, this isn't a political forum. This is about business. And that's what we want to keep it as. We want to, we want to learn lessons from a basically a very experienced and very accomplished businessman. And that's why we're here today. So I'll, without any further introduction, I'll turn it over to the speaker himself. Everybody, welcome Mr. Ichida. me to this um, um, forum, uh, but also for your introduction. Thank you so much. I would also like to thank everybody for coming tonight. And I'm very grateful in your introduction, you did indicate that today we stay with business. Try and stay with business. I think uh, it's, it's very important that we do that. And so thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, I do spot a few faces that have been missing since um, I ventured into what I'm doing now. So very good to see some of you. And I wish I would have more time to do what we used to do many years back, interacting, talking to each other, sharing experiences. Um, I think it's my duty first to appreciate and thank the initiators of uh, the, if you like, uh, startup junction. It's a very, very good initiative. So to those who thought about it, to those who have invested time and their uh, efforts and skills into it, I'd like to thank you because it's very important for them. I wish that um, all of us in the business community who are doing businesses have succeeded in one or another would invest a little bit more in initiatives like this. I wish that um, whoever is the government of the day would invest a little bit more in initiatives like this. I think the country, the economy would have been much better than what it is today. So thank you to those who are involved in this. Um, I ask Matthew to give me the liberty to use the flip chart. So just want to put one stuff on the flip chart. Don't pay too much attention to it. I'll talk through briefly, and I may refer to that flip chart once in a while. It's just that I love it. Equal to S is equal to I. 
where and what is income or uh, whatever you want to call it, funds, and C is equal to cost of consumption or expenditure, and S is equal to savings, and I is equal to investment or capital. Because I assume that as entrepreneurs, it's very important that you understand this, this, this issue as a basic minimum, if you want. You don't have to be an expert in these things, but just the understanding what or how you can manipulate these four elements in investing in sustaining your business. In my view, it's worked well for me to remind yourself. So I think essentially, let me start by saying, to me, most of us standing here have assumptions, have assumptions and fixations about success. We think that we can't be successful because we want to be successful. It's not always correct. We will be successful because we want to be successful, because we're working and behaving as people who want to be successful. You want to be an entrepreneur? You want to be an investor? You have to learn to spend some money. Whatever money is available to you, which is why you have to learn to spare some money. To spare some money, you have to reduce your expenditure, your consumption. You have to reduce your luxury perceptions of life. You've got to go through some pain of some kind in order to have some money available for you to invest. Even if you loan, you borrow that money, that's why I'm calling it Y income or funds, you have to use that money properly. You have to know that if you're extravagant, you will have less money to make available for investment. Don't waste too much time on it, but I wanted to say that. So for young people, young businesses, I think it's important that you take opportunities when they arise. You must look for opportunities. You must evaluate options available to you and make your decisions. Once you've made your decisions, I think it's important to focus. Do what you've decided to do and do it persistent, persistently, resiliently, even if you are being discouraged by others. No two people are the same in the world. You can't say because HH is a rancher, I'll be a rancher. <laughs> but if you want to be a rancher, you can be a better rancher than HH if you focus, if you work hard at it, if you know the basic dynamics. That's what I'm saying. I'll be jumping over what I'm saying here. Frankly speaking, I've seen too many young people in this country who have wishful thinking, who want to be like some of the guys I see in this crowd, but they don't walk the talk. I'm sorry if I make you unhappy tonight. You have to walk the talk. You have to be serious about what you want to do. Bill Gates started his computer business on the floor of a room I don't want to say what that room was. On the floor of the room, he had no desk, he had no nothing. Today, Microsoft. Today is what you know about Bill Gates. Many young people say, I can't do business because I have no money. That is not true. Nobody is born with money. You lucky if you inherit your income. You're very lucky. You can inherit it and blow it up. Very easy. I think it's your mindset. It's your mindset, it's your seriousness, it's your commitment to what you want to be, what you want to do. You need basic skills. I'm jumping. You need basic skills in order to succeed reasonably. Basic understanding. 
When I say skills, I don't mean you have to be a professor. I don't mean you have to have a master's. I mean you have to have the basic tools that allows you to understand why it is important not to buy a Mercedes-Benz after having been to the bank to borrow money. And your project proposal says you're borrowing money to set up a little, if you like, milk processing plant. Then you cheat the bank in your assumption. You cheat the bank, instead of actually investing in that plant, you increase this seed on unproductive expenditure and Mercedes Benz. You're actually not cheating the bank, you're cheating yourself. Eventually, you know, the chickens will come home to roost. <laughs> I'm serious about it, I've seen it many times. You need basic understanding to know that if you don't continue investing, <coughs> you are impairing your capability to earn income. You are impairing your capability to grow. Matthews, I thought I must say this. I've been encouraged to talk about myself. I find it extremely difficult to do that. It's an, it's, it's an animal, the animal in me is not sure whether I will not be misunderstood, but I will attempt to do that. I graduated economics and business at the University of Zambia. 